In October, a number of new LGBT movies and TV shows, as well as projects featuring LGBT leads, will premiere. I wanted to highlight the best to make your life easier. In the comment section, let me know which projects you plan to watch and which projects you learned about for the first time. And I want to give a big thank you to all of the new members who joined my channel recently. Because of your support, I am able to continue creating these videos. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. Now, stay tuned. Shall I Compare You to a Summer's Day is an experimental drama out of Egypt that explores gay relationships and polyamory. The story's pull from the filmmaker's diary entries blends live action, animation, and music video-esque sequences, creating a montage of erotic and poetic visuals. The title of the film, Shall I Compare You to a Summer's Day, is from Sonnet 18 by Shakespeare. In the last stanza of Sonnet 18, Shakespeare wrote, This beauty will last forever. I think the goal of the film is to showcase gay love in multiple forms because gay love has evolved and has survived extreme climate changes in society. Public opinion has shifted regarding acceptance of gay rights. The film was banned in Egypt because critics stated it promoted homosexuality and the film shows several sexual encounters between men. And gay love is still taboo in Egypt. If you enjoy art house films or indie films, then you might enjoy Shall I Compare You to a Summer's Day. The film will be available October 25th via TLAvideo.com. Mama's Boy is an original HBO documentary that unpacks Dustin Lance Black's complicated relationship with his mother. Due to contracting polio as a child, his mother was paralyzed from the chest down. Dustin was raised in a Mormon household with two other siblings. He wrote the script for the film Milk, and in 2009, he won the Academy Award in the category of Best Writing Original Screenplay. After winning the award, he promised same-sex couples that they would soon have equal marriage rights. His mother's response to that statement had an immense impact on his life and their relationship. If you enjoy documentaries, then you might enjoy Mama's Boy. Mama's Boy premieres on October 18th on HBO and HBO Max. Interview with the Vampire, the new TV show, is based on Anne Rice's 1976 novel. The series centers around Louis, a closeted, wealthy black man in the early 1900s and how Lestat seduced him and turned him into a vampire. The first 10 minutes feel clumsy and unimportant, but the story dazzles at the 11 minute mark. I have a confession. I have not watched the movie with Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. I don't know if those characters were gay, but I'm surprised that AMC chose to show Louis and Lestat as lovers. The story feels modern and nuanced. Louis has pulled his family up from the gutters to the upper middle class through sex work. The actor who plays Lestat, Sam Reed, is utterly hypnotizing and oozes sensuality. At times, I find myself wanting to be bitten by him, and I hate blood. The TV series was renewed for a second season in September before it even premiered on October 2nd. If you enjoy vampire or horror films or the Anne Rice novel, then you might enjoy Interview with the Vampire. It is also available on AMC or AMC Plus and airs on Sundays. Also, if you subscribe to Shudder, you have access to the first episode. I previously highlighted Benediction in a video earlier in the year. The biographical drama, written and directed by Terrence Davies, will be available to stream in October. The film stars Jack Loden and Peter Capaldi of Doctor Who as the World War I soldier and war poet Siegfried Sassoon. The film chronicles the British poet's shadow gay life before and during his marriage in the 20s and 30s. He married his wife, Hester, in 1933. Hester knew he was gay when they married. He had affairs with several men as he attempted to come to terms with his homosexuality, while at the same time broken by the horrors of war. His life's journey became a quest for salvation. Benediction is heart-wrenching, somber, stylized, and romantic. If you enjoy biographical period films, then you might enjoy Benediction. Benediction will be available on Hulu on October 16th. 
The Male Gaze, The Heat of the Night is a collection of shorts produced by NQV Media. NQV Media is an LGBT film distribution company. The collection contains six shorts from Spain, Israel, Sweden, Belgium, and the UK, including Sky Blue and Thirst. In Sky Blue, Tom meets Simon, a Cameroon refugee on a dating app. They have a passionate sexual relationship and both hope to find love and a better life. However, Tom realizes that the relationship has a huge impact on his own life and is forced to make a difficult choice. The film won an award of excellence at the Global Shorts Film Festival in 2018 and was nominated for Best Short Film at the 2018 Paris Short Film Festival. Thirst is an experimental monologue that delves into the mind of a lonely gay man in his 30s who is exhausted from hookups. His desires, insecurities, and wavering belief that he'll find love are laid bare. I think this will resonate with anyone who is single but would like to be in a relationship. The common theme amongst all of the shorts in the collection is intense love. You can stream The Male Gaze, The Heat of the Night via Vimeo Worldwide, Film Do Worldwide, Amazon US, Amazon UK, Amazon Germany, and Amazon Japan right now. I first learned about The Perfect David at a film festival and I was immediately intrigued. The Perfect David, a drama out of Argentina, explores a young bodybuilder's unhealthy obsession with creating an ideal body and his mother's obsessive artistic motivations. David's mother is an artist using him as a muse for a sculpture. To build a perfect body, he maintains a strict straining regimen, including early morning workouts, high protein diet, and supplements. David's facial expressions remain somewhat withdrawn and stoic, as if he's hiding behind his body, and he only comes alive when admiring bodybuilders or in a drunk moment, showing off his body to googly-eyed schoolmates. David's sexuality is a mystery to himself. As he watches straight porn, he stares at the muscular male, but is it in lust or appreciation? The film is disturbing, but visually striking. If you like dark dramas or films exploring sexual orientation, then you might enjoy The Perfect David. You can rent or buy the film at tlavideo.com right now. Sissy is a thriller out of Australia and one of the best thrillers that I've watched this year. Cecilia, a mega influencer, runs into a childhood friend, Emma. Emma invites her to attend a weekend getaway with her female partner and a bisexual couple. Emma fails to inform Cecilia that her childhood bully will be in attendance as well. The film comments on the influence of social media and its impact on mental health, as well as unresolved childhood trauma and its influence over our decisions. The cinematography is stunning with common themes of gold glitter, which I love. The script is tight, in fact, one of the tightest thrillers that I have ever watched. Every word is meaningful and necessary. The performances are brilliant. The ending will leave you gasping for breath, I promise you. Overall, I think the goal of the film is to explore the things we hide about ourselves from others. If you enjoy slasher films, gore, or thrillers, then you might enjoy Sissy. Sissy premiered on Shudder on September 29th, but since it was the end of September, I featured it in this video. Queer for Fear is also for the horror fans. Queer for Fear is a four-part documentary about LGBT horror history told passionately by fans. Horror is a safe space for many people in the community because the genre is viewed as existing outside of the norm where we live as well. The interviewees include film historians, directors, actors, drag queens, and more. Queer for Fear is a deep dive within horror film history and we learn so much. For instance, the director of the 1935 film, Bride of Frankenstein, James Well, was openly gay throughout his career in Hollywood. He dated David Lewis, a prominent Hollywood producer from 1930 to 1952, and about homoeroticism and mainstream horror in indie classics. If you like learning about LGBT history, documentaries, and horror, then you might enjoy Queer for Fear. If you are a fan of horror, let me know in the comment section and tell me what is your favorite LGBT horror film. Queer for Fear is available via Shutter right now. Gerontophilia is a film directed by iconic 
a director, Bruce LaBruce. The film follows Lake, an 18-year-old who is exploring his attraction to much, much older men, 70 and above, while working at a nursing home. Lake becomes close to one of the patients, Melvin, an 81-year-old. Melvin's one desire is to see the Pacific Ocean one last time before he dies, and Lake plans to make his dream come true. The film questions how Melvin will react to the outside world. The film is available on Apple TV right now. If you want to explore more of Bruce LeBruce films and live in Montreal, visit Cinematique Theater. The theater is having a retrospective of his work. You can watch Valentine, Pierre, and Catalina, which looks steamy. Valentine loves Catalina, Catalina loves Valentine, Valentine loves Pierre, and Pierre loves Valentine and Catalina. It is a double feature with a modern film that is a love letter to B-horror movies from the 60s. It's called The Thing from the Lake. You can also watch The Affairs of Lydia, which was released this year. In The Affairs of Lydia, a model discovers her husband, Michelangelo, is having an affair with a male fashion photographer, and she plots her revenge. I'm not a huge fan of overly marketed and popularized TV shows. However, I cannot seem to escape the magnetism of White Lotus. White Lotus is a dramedy TV series on HBO. The show follows guests and employees of the White Lotus Resort chain. The first season is set in Hawaii, and the second is set in Sicily. In season one, our Australian actor Murray Bartlett played Armand, the manager who is gay and a recovering drug addict who has been clean for five years. A scene with Armand in a compromise sexual situation went viral on social media. For his role, Murray won a Critics' Choice Award and an Emmy. Jennifer Coolidge stars in both season one and two. I hope season two will also feature gay characters. The creator, Mike White, who is 52, identifies as bisexual and his father came out as gay in 1994. If you're a fan of dramedies or Jennifer Coolidge, then you might enjoy White Lotus. White Lotus season two premieres on HBO and HBO Max on October 30th. High School is a new series based on the memoir of the same name by twin lesbian sisters, Tegan and Sarah. The sisters are indie pop singers. Their song, Walking with a Ghost, lived in my head rent free. The show is a coming of age dramedy. High School explores the difficulty of finding individuality and identity at the same time with your doppelganger that you're constantly compared to. As a twin myself, I know that struggle firsthand. The series is a Freebie original. Amazon bought IMDb TV and changed the name to Freebie. You can watch High School for free on Amazon Prime. If you enjoy teen angst, 90s nostalgia, or Tegan and Sarah, then you might enjoy High School. The show premieres on October 14th. The way I feel about White Lotus is how I feel about Chucky. The TV show, based on the Child's Play film franchise, follows Jake, a gay 14-year-old who buys the doll at a garage sale. Then Chucky wreaks havoc on his life. Jennifer Tilly reprises her roles from the previous films. In the show, Jennifer is bisexual. I love the representation. What I also love about Chucky is that LGBT preteens and teenagers can watch the show with their families and discuss sexual orientation. If you enjoy horror, teen-led projects, or Jennifer Tilly, then you might enjoy Chucky. Season 2 premiered on October 5th. You can watch Chucky on USA or Sci-Fi channels or Peacock Premium, YouTube TV, Hulu with Live TV subscription, Fubo TV, or Sling TV. And this is a reminder, the gay romantic drama, My Policeman, starring Harry Styles, Rupert Everett, David Dawson, and Emma Corrin, will have its theatrical release on October 21st. The film will show at Cinemark Theaters and Harkin Theaters, which are located in California, Colorado, Oklahoma, and Arizona. Also, you can visit the website, mypolicemanmovie.com, for more theaters that will show the film. In the comment section, let me know if you plan to watch My Policeman in the theater, it will also stream on Amazon Prime Video in November if you miss it at the theater or prefer to watch it at home. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please follow me on Instagram at writervicyates for more about my art and literary projects. And in the comment section, let me know which projects you plan to watch and which projects you learned about for the first time. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel and become a member if you can, and like and share this video. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, have a lovely day. Besos. Mwah.